Greetings and salutations my friends, welcome to How To YouTube A Complete Guide. Today we are talking in episode 5 about hardware and software. We're going to talk about what exactly you need just to get going on a channel, what are the first upgrades you can buy. I won't be giving you like full tutorials on how to edit, but I will be sort of sh showing you what I use and why I use it. And then I'll provide lots of really useful links to really good guides that do it a lot better than me. So let's get straight into it. So now we're going to start talking about the more technical side of YouTube and, and some of the hardware and software that I advise people to use. Obviously, I, you know, I'm not a tech reviewer. I haven't tried 100 different microphones, but I'm going to tell you what I've used and what I really like. So the first thing you're going to want, the, the only thing you need to get a YouTube that you have to buy is a microphone. Your normal gaming headset microphones aren't probably good enough. You usually create quite a bit of static background noise. This is what I'd say you, the only thing you really need to invest in to get a half decent mic, whether that's a really decent headset or this is the, the choice I was made, I made when I first started. So you can see I bought it on the 13th of November 2015. It's a blue snowball. It's a very popular starter mic. It's a USB mic. It does the job. It's great. Only sort of small things with it is the stand isn't the most. That's a plastic stand. Um, but as long as you're not throwing it about, it's fine. It also doesn't have a volume control. So if you need to up the volume and stuff like that, you need to go into your editing software to do so. But it's a decent mic, a tiny bit on the quiet side. But I would, I recommend it to anybody. I think for 50 quid, it's a worthy first investment for your channel. The sound is so important in a channel because of it can be an instant turn off. I'm sure you've all watched a video. You think, oh, that's, that looks interesting. Click on the video and there's all that in the background. And it, it just makes it hard to watch. It makes it hard to enjoy. So I would, from the outset, as your first investment, get a decent mic. There's tons of really good websites that compare starter mics. You probably get some cheaper than this that do the job. But you know, I think this is a really, really good starting point um, to get you going, to get decent quality with no background noise, no static, a decent start. And then obviously you move on to probably the sort of second biggest thing, I think, for me. You know, th there is a um, choice here whether you actually have your webcam at all, you're on face. A lot of people that have gaming channels, for instance, um, will not don't even have their their little head in the bottom corner like this um i think i think it's i think it's really important you could definitely do that if you don't want to be on webcam that is fine but i think it's definitely going to increase the speed in which you grow increase your views i think it adds a personal touch they can see you reacting to the game and you know all that sort of thing you know i i find if i'm watching a uh a game somebody play a let's play and their webcam is on i'll look at them quite a lot remarkably um, amount of time that i'll be watching them for reactions you know and all that good stuff i think it just adds a bit more personality to the video you know otherwise you're just watching a game with a voiceover um this is a really and it's on offer at the moment i don't know for how long but it's on offer at the moment the logitech 920 hd pro usb 1080p webcam i think this does an admirable job um i had a 720p webcam when i first started and that was fine as well but for 60 quid for a 1080p webcam this is what i'm using right now it is perfectly adequate i don't see me upgrading any time soon ever really i think it does a perfectly good job it's nice and small it works it has a microphone on it but i'd advise never to use built-in microphones on webcams they're never very good and they're also quite far away that's on top of my monitor so i think this is a really nice little bit of kit it's you know you could get the sort of cheaper one but i think if you want to set yourself up from the go you get a snowball and a logitech c920 there are obviously other similar webcams and stuff like that you might be able to find one a little bit cheaper but this has been great for me 100 quid to get yourself going with a really nice bit of kit that you won't need to replace for a long long time so the last little bit of what kit i want to show you talking about microphones and um webcams is the upgrade same manufacturer that the blue microphone yeti this is what this is this um has a little pop filter on it um a pop filter basically 
stops that really annoying noise. This isn't the best pop filter. You probably worked that out already, but it's a lot of them are like those big circular ones. Um, and that just gets away a bit. My current setup, I'm actually moving desks soon. Um, but my current setup means there. And it's just, if it was sitting there on top, it'd just be a little bit too big. So um, I'm happy to just use this mini one. It's not as good. But the Blue Yeti microphone has been absolutely brilliant for me. I have it in this uh, vintage white look at the moment. It's 120 quid. It's still a USB microphone. After... After this level of microphone, the next sort of step up is to get in like I don't I'm not a, I'm not a sound techie person like one of those proper audio input with a soundboard and all that good stuff that's getting quite expensive. I think this will do you up until that point or or just ongoing. I think I don't need to you know change this up at the moment. I've got it attached just on the stand as you see there. Um, but you can get it, uh, you know, the audio booms, the mic booms that come in, they're attached to the desk. And once I move desks and stuff, that's what I'm going to do. But I, this has just been brilliant for me. It just plugs into my computer, USB style. Once you get it set up, it, it's really simple to use. It even has um, a mute button. It's got a volume control with a, um, I don't even know what it's called, um, the gain. I know the gain and different audio patterns. So you can ask where it records the sound from you can you can focus it out here or you can focus it everywhere so if you're doing a podcast with other people so you can have people either side it's just a really versatile mic does the job superbly well definitely it's that's why it's so popular among youtubers you will see this you, you will see this microphone a ton of times if you watch any sort of youtube content So next up is what uh, we're going to talk about is recording software. Now, this comes down a lot to sort of personal preference, how you like to do things. Um, I personally use OBS and it's a free open platform in, and it works really, really well for me. There is, um, you know, there's quite a few settings and stuff that if you're not knowledgeable about that stuff can be quite confusing. But if you just literally YouTube search a how to set up OBS for gaming, it's great. And what it does, OBS, is it records the webcam and the um, screen or the game or the program that you're using at the same time. It's all in one video file and, you know, you just edit from there. Some people like to record the webcam separately so it's easier with edits and stuff like that. But I, one of the reasons I like OBS is it's pretty simple to use for stupid people like me. It's free. That's always a good thing. But also um, it allows me to stream on Twitch as well. So I use OBS for streaming on Twitch, which is a different setup. There is another rival to this called XSplit, which um, I think it costs money. Um, but it's very similar. Some it's, There's a quite, you know, a lot of argument over who prefers what. But there are other, other programs like Camtasia and Fraps and other things you can try out. I think a couple of them have free trials, but it has the logo over and then you have to pay for. But um, if you, I, I think, you know, I've only ve very sort of briefly used a couple of the other ones. And OBS for me has been brilliant. I've never had a problem with it. So my advice, just, you know, give OBS a go. You know, maybe try a couple of the others to see which suits your needs best. Maybe you would like to record the webcam separately, like I said, so you can just do a bit more fun editing and stuff like that. But for my style, um, it's perfect. Just record it all in one go, edit out what's necessary, good to go. The green screen was easy, easy to set up, which we'll talk about shortly. Um, but the green screen was great for OBS. It only takes seconds to do. So on, on to editing software. Um, this is my editing software of choice, which is Sony Vegas Pro. It is quite expensive. I was lucky enough to already had a copy way before YouTube for another business thing. But um, it is quite expensive, but um, it is very, very good. It's sort of the gold standard of sort of, you know, there's a couple of others, but I, I found it really, like I said, you know, before that my style dictates that I don't really do much editing. This is literally the entirety, you know, of, of an episode of my journeyman. Um, this just took me a minute, two minutes to do to edit it totally. Um, before rendering it um, so I use the sort of Sony Vegas um, if you're looking for sort of free options especially when you're getting going you don't really want to invest big much money <clears throat> there is Windows Movie Maker which I've used a small amount and you know it's it doesn't do anything too extravagant but for what I do I could easily use Windows Movie Maker and it's free um, if you're on the Mac I think there's I uh, um iMovie I think it is and that's a free version very much like Windows Movie Maker it's the Apple version of that they're both free so I would say to start with use those 
And then if you decide that you need to upgrade, you need to do more tricky editing, add more effects and stuff like that, then then go for the sort of uh, Sony Vegas or the likes and stuff like that. But again, do your own research on this. I haven't, I'm not a techie review. I tried all, you know, I didn't try all the different programs you can use. Do some research. You know, there's probably some good programs that are like in between, you know, relatively cheap, just maybe 20 quid or so that are just a bit better than the standard movie maker. But, you know, d- do what you're comfortable with. Like I said, I could probably use Windows Movie Maker for the simple stuff that I do, but I just know I, do, I know Sony Vegas a little bit more, and I just sort of use that because that's what I'm used to. It always takes a bit of a learning curve to get used to the new programs. Um, but Windows Movie Maker and iMovie are your two definite starting choices, and then move on from there if you feel the need to. So let's talk about what sort of um, programs you'd need to do things like your profile picture, channel art, thumbnails. Again, this is very much down sort of personal preference and what you know, what you've learned and all that sort of stuff. So for me, um, I use PaintShop Pro <clears throat> just because that's what I know. I think obviously the biggest one is Photoshop Pro. But if you're looking for something um, cheaper, there's plenty of programs out there. Like if you just do a simple Google search, you know, best free graphic design programs best free photoshop clones there's a program called gimp that's really really good that i did use for a while <clears throat> but again it, it's more about what you feel comfortable in they can all do a job what we're doing in creating thumbnails and channel art and um profile pictures is not very complex in terms of these programs so even the most basic one even the free versions of most of these things you could probably do it in ms paint to be honest if you really tried <laughs> but i think you know just do what you feel comfortable with for me i know paint shop pro i do intend to learn photoshop at some stage just because it's you know the industry standard and all that sort of thing and and but and it's very very similar but i just haven't got around to it yet i'll learn it one day one day it will be done so maybe after you've set up your microphone and you've got your webcam and you've done that for a little bit the next sort of big sort of step up is the green screen and it's it's sort of you know initially when when i didn't know much about it and the thought of getting a green screen was like oh god this this sounds like it's going to be tricky and and stuff like this it's inexpensive and it's actually really simple i use obs to set it up and this is the actual kit that I bought um, on the 23rd of April. So it's just over a year old now. And it's been brilliant for me. It's six, £73. And with it, you get three different screens, although I've never used white and black. So because you need a color that doesn't match what you're wearing, any sort of black. And it, yeah, just stick to the green. Um, it's got a big stand that hooks on. It's got two big studio lights. And it's just the perfect starter kit. One thing i will say about the actual green screen material itself that comes with this is it's absolutely shite it comes folded this is this is amazing bit of design if you're a product developer out there genius um is that it comes folded and so it therefore it's got some sort of you know, you know bend marks on it and it's this weird sort of materially plasticky thing that's impossible to iron because it just melts you can't just sort of steam it the amount of you know the reviews you'll see the review the people bad said the, the people that are struggling with it are all just saying i can't bloody get it flat i can't get it flat but the thing is it's i still think it's worth buying this because you're basically playing 72 quid for a really nice stand um, with some clips and some really good studio lights on tripods with the umbrella things you get everything you need and then what I all I do is go to like a fabric shop and get a large bit of green green screen material because um, it doesn't have to be any particular shade of green all you want is something that's bright green something that you know as long as you're not wearing green tops and stuff something that's very different to what you're normally wearing um and doesn't clash with anything green is generally speaking the best color to get because even with other colors even if i was wearing all black um and then had a white screen even the pigment in my skin because i'm quite pale if i bring it up to the light a little bit it goes a bit white. therefore it'd start going see through hands and face and stuff like that even like eye colors of browns and stuff work with don't work with different colored green screens so unless you've literally got bright green eyes <laughs> then maybe you don't but even then you should be fine because it's darker because there's not so much light coming especially as a glasses as wearer like me um so i'd 
you know, I spent £73 on this kit to begin with and it's still doing a, a fantastic job. The green screen material itself, I actually ordered online and it was about 20 quid for, or £20 or 33 US dollars. I'm just making that number up, to be honest. Um, for a big bit of material that I just drape over the top of my frame, and it's been brilliant. Um, I'm actually sort of sitting in the corner of a, our lounge at the moment with this frame, and we are moving um, downstairs. We've got a, we're redecorating this big lounge area with a nice fireplace downstairs, and I'm having a special little corner for my desk setup. And I've actually what I've bought is an IKEA blackout blind. Um, that I'm going to, it's giant, it's like two meters long and it's going to be atta it's attached to the ceiling and then what I'm going to do is it only comes in like white, black or brown I'm actually going to paint it green screen green um, and if that's not possible, get some more material over the top and then what I'm going to do is have a little hook on the wall blind on the top and then just when I need to do green screen just roll it down, hook it on, job done so I can sort of store it away, the only problem with this big frame obviously you need to sort of store it, it comes apart really easy um, but I think this is a great little bit of kit to get started with. Even with the folds when you first get it, it's still usable. It's just a bit more tricky to light because the whole point about a green screen is that you need to light it evenly. Because as soon as you get shadows in the green screen, that's when it doesn't recognise it and you start seeing weird sort of shapes appear and shading appear. At the moment, my basic setup is I've got the green screen right behind me here. Um, just a little bit longer than my arms. It just, I'm touching the edges of it. It's just that shot. And I'm only using one of the studio lights above my monitor, above here, because it's at a nice angle that it's it's lighting me, but it's also lighting the area behind me. So um, once I move downstairs, I'm going to use two smaller ones from different angles to make sure I don't get any shadows behind me. But there's lots of really good green screen YouTube, uh, YouTube tutorials if you if you don't want to get the sand like this you can if you've got a wall you can paint or even just a bit of an old bit of material that you can pin up on the walls or drape over something there's loads of sort of diy workarounds if you don't have any money to spend to begin with you know if you've got a couple of um you know if you could drape something uh your green screen material over a curtain and then maybe get some just sort of normal bedside lamps um and just sort of you know there's plenty of ways around it, but this is a really, really good starter kit. Um, it's done me well for ages. These lights have been brilliant. I've been using them every day for over a year. No bulbs have gone. Nothing's wrong with it. All good. Can't recommend it more. It's a, and, and the good thing about doing this YouTube setup is, especially when you're doing Let's Plays, obviously I've made myself a little bit bigger than I normally would. I'd be more... Um, Normally, I'd sort of play, generally speaking, I'd be sort of this sort of size here in the corner a little bit more, just so I've got as much gameplay. And if you think about it, so this is the size of my webcam where my hands are. If I didn't have a green screen, I'd have this whole area covered up by my back of my lounge and therefore there would be less gameplay so a really nice thing about the green screen is it makes you smaller you can see the stuff going on behind my head without covering too much of the screen it's really really good i think it ups the sort of professional value of the uh, channel itself and the videos and it's definitely a worthy investment so there we go guys, another video done. I hope you enjoyed it and got something useful out of it. If you have any questions on the subjects we talked about in this video, then please leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, I'm also going to do a live Q&A at the end of this series on YouTube. So if you want to talk, um, have any more questions or want to go a bit more in depth or something we haven't talked about before, then make sure you join me on that stream. Also subscribe if you're new. Um, also, you know, if you've got your own tips to share, Put them in the comments. Let's help each other grow. You know, I'm not the world's expert of YouTube. I'm just showing you what I've learned. But if you've got your own tips and tricks, then please do leave them in the comments. Get involved. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much for joining me, guys. Love you all. Bye-bye.